On a typical dark, clear night, away from bright lights, observers can usually glimpse four to six shooting stars per hour. Now, despite their name, these aren't stars at all, but rather tiny particles of solar system debris. Grains of dust or tiny pea-sized bits of matter from the formation of the planets. Earth sweeps up this debris in its orbit about the sun all the time, collecting about a hundred tons of this material every day. Passing through denser and denser layers of our atmosphere, these particles heat up, reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit and incinerating high above the ground. This causes the brief streak of light known as a shooting star, or more properly, a meteor. When Earth passes near or through the trail of dust particles that were liberated by a passing comet, we may see a meteor shower. With thousands of comets known and new ones being discovered all the time, there are a lot of dust trails looping through the solar system. Now, Earth doesn't encounter all of them, but at specific times of the year, it plows through a dust trail and observers on the ground might see dozens of meteors per hour in the night sky. To see a meteor shower, First, look up the peak dates of the major showers and hope for clear skies. Good displays to keep track of are the Quadrantids in January, the Perseids in August, and the Geminids in December. Although these showers are named after particular constellations, that doesn't mean to look only toward those constellations. The names simply indicate where the shower's radiance is located, or the point from which the meteor trails seem to emanate. The meteors themselves can appear anywhere in the sky. Because of this, your viewing site should provide a view of as much of the sky as possible, ideally on a high hill with no tall trees or buildings nearby to block any part of your view. This will allow you to see as much of the sky as you can. And don't use binoculars or a telescope, which will restrict your field of view. Also, make sure you're away from, or at least shielded from, bright lights, which will wash faint meteors from view. Now note that even the best showers can be washed from view by moonlight, especially during the period about a week before to a week after full moon. While there isn't much we can do about the moon's phase, we can time our observations for either before moonrise or after moonset when the moon isn't in the sky. Generally speaking, the recommended time to look for a meteor shower is after midnight and before morning twilight. That's when Earth's rotation has carried us around so that we're looking in the direction of the dust stream. Sort of like driving on the highway and seeing more bug splats on the front window of your car than on the back window. Now, since many meteors can be faint, make sure that your eyes are well adapted to the dark. This usually takes about 20 minutes away from bright lights. And don't spoil your night vision by pulling out your cell phone and tweeting how many meteors you see. Then you'll have to wait another 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust to the dark again. Your best tool will be patience. Watching a meteor shower doesn't mean looking for five minutes, seeing one, then going back inside to warm up. To really appreciate a shower, plan on spending a few hours observing. Make yourself comfortable. Bring a lawn chair or a blanket to lie on. While you wait, see if you can make out some constellations. Look for colors in the stars. Watch for satellites. Sooner or later, perhaps when you least expect it, you'll see a brief streak of light flash overhead as a particle of cosmic dust blazes across the night sky. Good luck and happy sky watching.